All right, so here we are in my garage. <laughs> a somewhat crowded garage, but well organized. And uh, I have been dying, dying, dying to start my review of the Honda ADV 150 that I purchased. Um, and I'm sure many motorcycle enthusiasts think is an abomination, especially with what I have done to it. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to be safe. And uh, man, I had a guy come by me just the other day and you know, I guess he just looked at this thing, thought it was just looked so stupid, and he just popped the wheelie and just blew past me to show what he could do. And it was pretty, pretty amazing. I mean, he kept that wheelie going for a long time. But anyway, let's let's get into to, to, to some of the things. Uh, I, this is my review. This is it. You know, I hope you like it. I got the headlamp on. I got the lights on in the garage. And uh, really, I was just going to go out on the trail and kind of do this in a, in a pretty place. But I thought, you know what, I got all the paperwork here, I got everything I need. You know, let's talk about the technical specs. Let's talk about everything that I like and love and hate about this vehicle. And uh, and let's just get into it. All right, so let's swing around and look at it. I've got the headlamp on to try to help you see it. I got, of course, my reading glasses <laughs> so I can read the doggone stuff to you. So let's get going. All right. So this is it. <clears throat> all right, let me get the headlamp on. So you can see what I did is <laughs> I put all that crazy reflective tape on there. And uh, I, I'm hoping that's going to help people be able to see it. You know, one of the things that they keep bringing out in the crazy videos that I don't like, they say, well, this is an adjustable uh, front cover. And it is. You see that little knob right there? Okay, it can go up and down one notch. But I'm going to tell you, you know, when I'm riding this thing, I, I don't get that much uh, benefit from it I mean there's a lot of wind buffing in me and uh, so you know finally I finally decided because it is cold at this time of year here in Florida so I bought the full-size helmet okay now one of the advertisements was that this helmet would fit down in here and you could shut the seat well unless I'm gonna bend the seat no no it's not gonna fit now maybe I bought a wrong helmet but this is to me this is a very nice helmet okay I got this for $69 at Walmart on order I had to order it and uh, you know I did try on some helmets at, at motorcycle shops and uh, you know and I would have bought them there but let's just look at this price tag over here and this is uh, this where I bought the bike was Ride Now Motorsports okay and uh, well, let's see well, let me just keep it back on the bike here um, anyway a half size helmet that I bought with a $20 discount um, and a large uh, it cost a hundred and four dollars hundred and five just say a hundred and five okay with tax a hundred and fifteen dollars so I got that full-size helmet for 69 at Walmart and uh, and I'm paying 119 at uh, right now now maybe there's some difference in the helmets and to me you know, I've been told by people that this is a good helmet. It's got these wind flaps. See, this is this is something you want to look for. See in the top of the helmet right here so that the wind can get into the helmet. I like the fact that the front comes way out. Now, I'm not a motorcycle guy. So I just, I, you get, I can reach up in there and scratch my nose, man, <laughs> which I have to do quite often when I'm riding this thing. And, uh, and so, you know, to me, it's a really cool uh, helmet. I'm just disappointed that it doesn't fit here. Now... One problem that I've got right now, and I'm sure it'll get solved eventually, is, you know, I want to get the, the luggage rack to go on the back right here. And uh, they, they're still working out whether the one on the PCX, which is the, the model previous to this one, uh, will work with this bike. And uh, so, you know, I haven't heard anything. I've been working on it for a month now. And uh, the guy just keeps telling me that Honda won't get back to him on it, that they're still trying to figure it out. So hopefully there'll be a luggage rack for this thing someday. But you can see the reflectors. Now, I want you to look at the shocks on this puppy. Look at that. Oh, my God. Now, I have been off-road with it, okay? And look at those beefy tires. See, this This is supposedly a scooter, all right? To me, I think it should be called, and that I'm going to coin this phrase. I want you to remember that that cybersecurity guy, Kirk Ellis, called this an auto motorcycle. This is an auto motorcycle. It's not a damn scooter. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to tell you what. It can get up and boogie. 
And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure that you know, motorcycle enthusiasts right now are just shaking their heads going, oh, what the hell, this guy, you know, but, you know, it weighs 300 pounds, and uh, I'm not used to ride. I mean, yeah, I'm an old fart, man. I'm, I'm 57. Now, I, there's a lot of guys out there, you know, it's just 50, 60, 70, you know, they're going, oh, hell, you know, we, we've been riding Harleys all our lives. Well, yeah, you have, you know, so, but I have almost tipped over on this thing, because if you come to a light and I get a little bit unsteady because I've only got, you know, 30 inch legs or whatever. And so, you know, I have to try to keep it steady. And sometimes I'll get to play them with my phone or my radio. Um, so we're going to get into all of that. Um, but, you know, and here's the front shocks, too. And we're going to get into the technical specs. Look at them spokes. Isn't that awesome? And uh, these are disc brakes. You know, that's that I told you, know, when I took my motorcycle class and, you know, here's the thing here in Florida, everybody was laughing at me. He said, well, you don't need a motorcycle license. Just just buy a motorcycle and go, you know, especially for a scooter, man. What the hell? You don't need a motorcycle license. Well, I went. It was hundred. It was two hundred dollars for the class. And I'm glad I got it, you know, and, and now I'm totally legal, you know, down in here. And it, this is nice to have the storage under the seat. You know, here's my registration. And insurance. Aid. And by the way, here, here's another thing for you, man. Now think about it. You know, I'm paying in Florida for this vehicle. Now I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to be selling. Hey, if you want a Honda Sonata uh, 2012, this is the one you want because I'm going to be selling it soon uh, in perfect shape. But uh, anyway, so because I'm replacing it with this and then I'm going to drive my wife's car and then I want to get um, probably the Subaru Outback, but that's down the road. I, we just don't. Man, oh, so here's, here's, let's get into the, the pricing on this thing. And uh, I'm pissed. I'm pissed off. Okay, so when I thought about getting this, you know, there's a lot of things uh, that went into the, the thought process on this. Was it was 4300 Okay, so then they hit me up for $597 in what's called dealer freight. Then they called, they said, the, whoa, we got dealer setup. For three eighty eight, then you got the dealer fee for five ninety nine. You know, and of course, and then in Florida we have sales tax. That's four oh four, and then they charge me one hundred and twenty eight for the registration and license fee for a grand total of six thousand four hundred and forty one dollars. Now, I don't know if these fees are normal. I've kind of tried to talk to people, and they're not giving me the lowdown on all of that that pricing. Uh, that just that just seems like a lot of dealer money to me, um, but you know who who am I? I could be wrong. I mean, some maybe somebody will watch this video and it can tell me, you know, that that's just outrageous. Uh, um, so anyway, I just wanted to give you the pricing on it. So you're, you're basically well in Florida, it's going to be looking at six thousand five hundred to get into a damn one fifty, you know, Honda ADV. No, it's it's I love it. I love it. So let's let's get into the things that I like and I don't like about it. I've been riding it now for oh well, almost a, a month, and uh, so here, I've been trying. <laughs> I've been trying all kinds of things. All right. So the the first thing that I can't stand is these mirrors. You know, you can't really see behind you. They're supposed to be concave. Uh, I, you kind of lean your arm out of the way, and I just I have a hard time seeing the cars behind me. And another thing I don't like is I would like to be able to pop these mirrors off. Because one of the things I bought this bike for, because it's supposed to be an adventure bike, is to go off-road. Well, what I've discovered is these tires, okay, let's just take a quick look at them. They're not real good in the uh, in the sand, you know. You get into the sand here in Florida, and uh, boy, the bike becomes really unstable, which is understandable. But the fact is, I mean, then they'll just spin in the sand. And I've gotten so that, you know, I've, I've had a couple of instances where I had a tough time getting out of the sand. And uh, so, anyway, that's just a, a, a gripe of mine, just to kind of talk about, you know, what you have there. But they are bigger tires, and, uh, you know, it's not it's not meant to, to be, you know, a, a dirt bike. But I was just hoping to travel some of the roads around here. And uh, so then I've been experimenting. One of the things, <laughs> you know, you, how stupid I am. But, uh, you know, you get into, you know, do you want music? And uh, if you go up on Amazon, you'll find all of these solutions where you can talk to like four people through a headset and it connects to your helmet and it costs $300. And, I, you know, I, I don't ride with anybody. I just ride by myself, you know, especially days of the virus. And uh, so I've been experimenting with having some music. So the first thing that I did with the helmet was I bought these, uh, well, I had these, 
uh, these earplugs. And uh, and I wore them inside the helmet with my with my Walkman. And by the way, hey, this is this is the new uh, the new Walkman that I bought, uh, not just for hiking but also for the motorcycle. And uh, it's the Sanjin. Um, DX80, 800, DX800. It's not even written on here. I would have thought they'd have it on the front. But uh, anyway, so that, man, that thing, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's, it, it gets great reception. And uh, so you wear these earplugs inside the helmet. So then I thought, well, what about, you know, if I just want to wear now, <laughs> you're going to laugh at this. These are my old uh, Air Force aviator goggles. <laughs> Look how scratched up they are from the desert. And uh, so I wear those with these noise canceling headphones. But boy, when you get up to about 60 miles an hour, these headphones want to blow right off you. Because <laughs> I'm not obviously wearing the helmet with those headphones. Um, but you know, for 35, 40, 45 miles an hour, these are fine. And you get pretty good uh, noise, uh, whereas with these earplugs, I think I'm going to go deaf because you have to crank them up. Even in that helmet, the wind noise is kind of loud. So, you know, maybe I'm just going to have to break down and buy that $300 uh, setup, but uh, I'm just not to that point yet. I've spent enough money at this point. Um, so, yeah, the, the, so the mirrors, oh, why do I want the mirrors to pop off? Well, I do want to do some crazy trails and, uh, you know, going over with a 300 pound bike, you know, that's not something that I really want but i think it's gonna happen and uh look at those mirrors they'll just break right off right and uh so if i could pop those off you know and and, and if i am you know here's here's another thing <laughs> you gotta think about you know going through life what was i i was a skateboarder uh you know i did a lot of uh, uh crazy sports and stuff so i got knee pads and i got elbow pads and you know of course i've got the the, the motorcycle helmet now and uh, and then of course I've got shin pads from softball, and uh, and I've got foot protection. So really, I could do some really aggressive uh, dirt biking on this thing, um, except for the fact that if I lean it over, I'm going to break them damn mirrors off. You know, I mean, so what if it goes down in the dirt into the sand? You know, that's probably where I'll lose it is in the sand. You know, it's not going to hurt anything for that thing to to just lay down and fall on top of me. Uh, and, and I don't think I'll break anything. I mean, you know, most of the time I'm, I'm not going to be going, I'm not that crazy. I'm not going to be going 50 miles an hour or something. And, uh, but I, I just don't know what to do about these mirrors. So that's a big, big problem for me. And I got to contact Honda and see if there's a way to, to deal with that. All right. So, uh, yeah, something you might not be worried about. Uh, now performance wise, um, we'll get into the specs in just a minute. Uh, I love the lights, uh, yeah, let's cut it on and you know what I'll cut the lights off in here you got to see this it's pretty damn impressive let me just kill the lights hold on oh geez should have probably done started the video this way but uh not damn it yeah cut the fan on so look at that I mean these are all LED lights I think that's pretty damn impressive it's completely dark in here and uh in the headlight you actually have high beam that's high beam. You know, look at that front. Isn't that awesome? Kind of looks mean, I think. You know, the way they got it it's structured with the with the lighting here. And uh, of course I got <laughs> you know all, all of that on there. Let's cut my headlamp off so you can see it better. And uh, so you know, when I'm out at night, you can actually see pretty good. Um, let's cut on this turn signal for you so you can see what them LED turn signals look like. So that's kind of what it looks like on the front. And I think this is very visible, you know, for anybody that's behind you. I think they're going to see that just fine. And uh, by the way, you know, if you if you do any research, uh, getting LED uh, lighting approved for a vehicle like this is uh, pretty damn difficult. And I don't really understand that. I just watched other videos and they talked about how important that was. So, uh, okay, so we can uh, go ahead and cut the uh, lights back on. All right, so let's get into the, the specs on the thing. Um, well, I guess I should talk about my experience with it also. And uh, um, I, uh, I got no problems with it. I think the acceleration is just fine. Uh, I can get up to 55, 60, 65. Now, I'm still breaking it in. You know, they say you gotta go up to 300 miles, you got to break it in properly. And uh, so I haven't really gone, you know, full speed to see if it'll go faster than 70 miles an hour. Now, one thing that I am kind of 
Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's true. It says I'm getting 104 miles to the gallon, and it's only got a 2.1 a gallon gas tank, which is kind of crazy. Uh, you know, when you think, and that's another reason I bought this thing because, you know, here in Central Florida, I just want to explore everywhere. Um, you know, and uh, you know, going out in a car with 30 miles to the gallon and driving around, especially you don't want to take. You take a car on the dirt roads and then you get it all filthy and everything. I don't care about this thing, man. I'm going to beat the hell out of it. I'm going to I'm going to get it dirty. I'm going to get it filthy. I'm going to go down, you know, through mud puddles, you know, whatever. Uh, and by the way, that engine just purrs. Uh, we'll, we'll start it up here in a little bit and uh, probably in the second video. I did want to show you. Here's the display, which is really cool. Uh, you got your, your uh, um, speed. Uh, these are your trip miles. Uh, I had to... I finally figured out how to set the time, the date, you know, and I, I swear when you get old, <laughs> you do need to know the time and the date because sometimes I don't remember what damn day it is, you know. So uh, you got that. And see, look here. This is what it's saying, 104 miles to the gallon. That's my average. And, uh, you know, this is your select well, select buttons uh, right well, over here. Yeah. There you go. Um there's the air temperature. That's pretty cool. I do like that because, man, I'm sitting there going, is it just me or is it cold out here? You know, <laughs> and so you get you get that going. Uh, there's the trip miles. You know, you got to I haven't reset those. I have actually I forgot how to do it. So it really not. And I, I'm surprised because I can actually see it. And when you hit that uh, blinker on, you notice it, it comes up right there on the dash. And that's a very nice uh, uh, setup. And it shows the ABS light. That's pretty good. And then you know, it is kind of kind of weird because when you're doing the uh, the blinkers, you know, you got to push it in to cut it off, flip it. That cuts it on right. That cuts it on left. And there. Now a couple of things to that I'm you know as I go, I'm learning. I'm learning and learning. Like I said, these are the high beams. Those are the low beams. That's just that little switch right there. Now this is your hill lock brake, which is kind of a nice. So you lock that. But don't do like me and forget to <laughs> forget to cut it off. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell's going on? The motorcycle won't go anywhere, you know? The auto motorcycle, that's my word for it. So you just hit this lever again, and boom, that cuts right off. And uh, so once you did that, uh, it, it, it just comes right in. You know, another, another cool thing uh, is, uh, let's cut that off. Now this is the seat, so if you just hit the button here, that brings up the fuel. Here's the fuel. <clears throat> kind of a beefy uh, uh, fuel handle, you know, and of course I always be real careful because I'll just set it right here now if the seat, if I didn't have the helmet in there, and then I just make sure that, you know, and then by the way, I mean, <laughs> when you fill this thing up, one gallon, I mean, you know, it's 2.1, I mean, it, it takes all of two minutes you know to fill this thing up and uh, it will cut it will slam off I mean because once it gets full you know so I just stick it down in there and let it fill up and then I just add a little bit on top of that and uh, that takes care of that and then oh here's another th feature that I'm sure that wasn't a feature that they had intended I just want to show this to you is uh, okay let's so let's take the seat down now let's pretend you know I'm I'm getting to the post office and I've got like just just today I was mailing some packages I had them down in here and I got that well you know a pain in the ass is I, I don't want I don't want the seat locking every time so if you just set it down see it's not like it's sitting on anything it's just it's just right there I guess I cut, cut my headlamp on so you can see okay it won't lock and that's great I mean I'm sure they didn't intend that to be a feature but I like it because a lot of times when I'm riding, I don't want the seat locked. I just like to get where I'm going, lift the seat up, do what I got to do, set the seat back down, go into the store, drop off whatever, uh, and then just come back out. So shut that back. Um, here's your settings on this. Uh, this is kind of cool. You got your, uh, this is your run, okay? That's your ignition. Then you got the, the seat fuel. That's off. And then you do have uh, over here is a lock and what you have to do you turn that steering wheel to the left and then you can lock it and so if somebody wants to steal the bike now if they want to steal it 300 pounds you know a couple big guys are going to throw it in the back of a pickup truck and they're off and gone with it you know but uh at the same time you know if you lock that steering wheel to the left at least they can't roll it up the ramp <laughs> into the back of the truck so it is a a little bit of a deterrent 
Now, and, you know, a couple things that I wish I had, but I can understand why they didn't provide it. Now, this right here, this is the, uh, this is the storage little area, okay? And I just keep my key right here. And then I've got, and by the way, there's a 9-volt, there's a or 12-volt, I'm sorry, 12-volt outlet back in there. And I keep my sunglasses in here, and, uh, and that's about it, you know, and a mask and my hand sanitizer. Oh, boy, COVID, you know. But uh, it's, it's really nice to have this, but you can't lock it. So, and oh, here, let's just show you how the key operates. Um, and don't ask me what the top is for. <laughs> but anyway, when you cut the key on, you see that little, that little green dot blinking? Let me get my headlamp out of the way. All right, so when it turns red, that means that the bike is disabled uh, as far as the key goes. Now the keys, it's a proximity key. And then when you just cut it and put it back on, of course, I just leave it on. And I just keep it right there because it's in my garage. And so I never have to look for it and just remember to take it out of there whenever I go somewhere. Um, so I, I guess that's kind of, let's just get real quick into the specs and then I'll post this video and we'll do some other videos. I want to do some riding videos uh, with it and I uh, got to get my glasses and uh, we'll get into, get into, uh, now how I'm going to do that. Now if, if these are some other things I've been looking into. They make these, uh, these mounts that you can put right here and uh, bring your cell phone up and just have it and, and by the way that's a <laughs> and that's another thing that's freaking useless okay and this is another reason I'm not real concerned about it was I, I wanted to use this on the back roads here in Florida I love traveling the back roads because we got all these horse farms and it's just beautiful and uh, with 200 miles of the I mean 104 miles of the gallon what do I care I can go just miles and miles and miles and and and, and just look at the the, the the wildlife and learn all the back roads and everything um, so anyway, get, uh, let's get into the specs. All right, so it's a 104, 149 liquid cooled, uh, single cylinder four stroke. Okay, 5.3 millimeter by 57.9 millimeter bore and stroke. Uh, it's got fuel injection, uh, which is kind of impressive. And by, the, I mean, I'm going to tell you, for a 150 cc, this thing, man, it just, it's got the get up and go. It's got the spunk. And, and I love the fact that you just, you just, all you do is turn the handle. And that's why I'm going to be able to make a video because I'm going to hold that phone in one hand. I wish I had the GoPro. I'm sorry. You know, $400 right now for the GoPro. Just can't afford it. But I'll just hold the phone up and we'll get some video of me riding it, you know, on, certainly not on a dirt trail, but, but on something. Uh, it's got an OTC, two valves per cylinder, automatic V-Matic belt drive, uh, uh, front suspension is a 31 millimeter telescopic four. That's what I was telling you. 5.1 inches of travel. Uh, twin shocks, uh, 4.7 inches of travel in the rear suspension. Um, the front brake is a 240 millimeter disc ABS. Uh, mechanical uh, in the back, you got the mechanical 130 millimeter drum. The front tire is 110 by 80-14, and the rear tire is a 130 by 70-13. Uh, um, so trail 18, 85 millimeter or 3.4 inches, uh, seat height is 30. Well, like I said, I only got 30 inch legs. Maybe that's, it's got 30, <laughs> 31.3 inches. So that's why I, I, I told you it almost went over on me. And, uh, the wheelbase is only 52. Now here's, here's another thing that I love. I love, I love, I love. Now imagine if I bought like a real motorcycle. Okay. Look at my garage. You know, it fits in here just fine. I got the golf cart here. I got the motorcycle or the, the auto scooter, the auto motorcycle, excuse me, right here. And uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not extremely small, 300 pounds, but it's not huge. And so you can, you can buy one of these and just keep it. And uh, boy, fun to ride, fun to ride. Curb weight, nine, 294. But I mean, by the time you load up this and everything, you might as well just say 300 pounds. Um, and I think that's that's about all the, the specs that I'll get into. You know, they always make a big deal about the two-position screen. I told you that's nothing that I really care about because it, it doesn't do squat for, for keeping the wind and everything off of you. And, uh, and I guess that's it for now. They do say, let's just talk about the suspension. I think this is really cool. Rugged suspension, premium shocks. The ADV-150 features a Showa, S-H-O-W-A, telescopic front suspension, with the most travel in its class, a full 5.1 inches in the rear, a pair of premium Showa shocks feature remote piggy bank reservoirs, which I guess 
well, I, I shouldn't say I guess, these, that's them right there. Isn't that cool? And uh, reservoirs uh, and triple rate springs that control 4.7 inches of travel. All right, so that's, uh, that's it for the first uh, review uh, video of the ADV 150. And uh, next video, we'll get it out and get it on the road. Okay.